She's the cloud that's always got rain in it. The sun that never stops shining. The fountain that's always got one more drink in it. She just never runs dry. And that's why in this, because of the times, after years and years and years of all of us sitting at the feet of Vesta Mangan to hear God's eternal truths, we have come again and fill this auditorium to hear the senior pastor's wife from the Pentecostals of Alexandria welcome her in the name of Jesus Christ. I love everybody in this room, but after last night and this morning, I will love you better. We need a baptism of love to absolutely wash us and cleanse us, motivate us and challenge us, and Mike, we will be changed. We will be changed. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Brother Urshan. Thank you, Brother McCool. Today will be an epical day for because of the times. We are at the crossroads. This will be a revolutionary because of the times. Say, I'm ready. Say, I'm real ready. I want you to give God Almighty your total being right now in worship. I love you. He loves you. Today, God. Do it better than that. Clap your hands, all you people, with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Such a delight to be with you. I'm just surprised that we're still here. Aren't you? I'm just surprised that we're still here. Because of the Times 94, we come to reaffirm, however, that we will occupy until he comes. We will prepare for a sovereign move of God. We will prepare for unlimited miracles. And we are preparing for the greatest revival since Pentecost. Tucked away in 2 Kings chapter 4 is one of my favorites of all of the Old Testament stories. It is the story of a widow of a preacher. As usual, she is bankrupt. And her creditors are threatening to take her two sons as slaves. But when she didn't know what to do, she knew where to go. And that's the only thing that saved this little widow. She knew where to go. She knew where to turn. But so many don't know. And many have no place to go. She goes to Elisha. God's prophet with the prophetic utterance and every city needs that kind of a church. Every city needs a center of victory with a prophetic utterance with a prophetic people for these prophetic times. And none of us can relax until every city in America has a thriving Pentecostal Jesus name, one God, Holy Ghost, prophetic church we can't emphasize that too much it's the only answer did you hear me it's the only answer and if you're in a city and you don't have that kind of church we're here after you and you're here after it Elisha said what shall I do for you I don't have the answer you have the answer what have you got in your house and she said nothing and I'm glad she didn't stop there Nothing except a jar of oil. And Elisha said, little widow, 
That's the miracle in your house today. Because of the times 94, any one of you could be the miracle in this house today. You can't look at anybody and say, I don't have the resources. Because you got something. And whatever that something is can be the miracle in your house today. And Elisha said, you've got to do something first. You've got to go borrow vessels and not a few. Take your little jar of oil. Pour it out into the vessels. And you know the miracle as she poured it out. Say that with me. Say as. As she poured it out. The oil just kept flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. And she was the only limit to her flowing oil. Always in God's book. In this book, any time that anybody faced a need when they gave their all, and I'm going to rely on this, folks. I'm not going to get in a rush. If I run out of time, I'll just quit. Because it's in this book. If I'll give it all, all the little oil I got, and that drives me every day, if I'll give all I got, you will never be able to house what God will do for every one of you in this room. Always as man met mammoth problems, when he gave his all, God poured out, pressed down, running over, say exceeding, abundantly. How bad do you want it? Give you a little oil. Pour it all out here today. The little lad's lunch with a, with a little, 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 little bit. Fed the hungry multitudes, 12 baskets full left over. Always, over and beyond what we're able to even think or ask. It's God's inexorable law of dynamics. It's an axiom as sure as gravity. You pour it out, and God said, I'll pour it in. When you pour out your little... I'll give you my much. I challenge you here today to pour out your life. Pour out your life. Pour out your life. Pour out your all. Pour it out to God. In Exodus chapter 4 is another interesting passage of Scripture. The Lord said unto Moses, Moses, what is that in your hand? And he said, A rod. Then God said, just throw it down. Yeah. Now, wrapped up in those three little words that I want to deal with today, you will find the dynamics of the law for a sovereign move of God, for unlimited miracles, for a greater revival than Pentecost in those three little words. Say, pour it out. Yeah. Say, throw it down. Yeah. And we'll see it. And until we do it, we're not going to have it, no matter who you hear preach and how good they can preach and all we can say about each other until we decide here today. Hallelujah. To pour it out. Say, pour it out. Come on, I'm not going to get in a rush. You've got to pour it out. The man said, break it. If it isn't, break it. If you're not broken, broken so we can pour it out. Now, when we pour out and throw down, we release to God. When we pour out, we release to Him. And then we have unlimited miracles and possibilities that defies my being able to tell you. For you see, we are the double portion generation. Don't forget that. Live with that when you wake up every day. We're going to be the double portion people. My church has got a double portion coming to it. Say every day. Every day. It has to become a lifestyle. We are the people with the promise that this latter house shall be greater than the former house. Anybody believe that? Shout it louder than that. you got to get with me. you got to believe this. Say the latter house is going to be greater than the former house. We are the people with the promise that the former rain would be moderate compared to this latter rain. 3,000, 5,000, say multiplied. multiplied. We are the church triumphant with the keys, the key of knowledge taken from the Jews, given to us. We've got the key of knowledge. We've got the key to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever we bind on this earth shall be 
Whatever we loose on this shall be loosed in. Say, I believe that. And so we are the Lord's people. And he told us, even by his own words, the gates of hell shall not be able to stand against you. I don't believe we believe that yet. Nothing can stand in the church path that is a Bible-backed guarantee to a victorious, miraculous, productive future. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 is God's irrevocable law of dynamics. If my people will pour it out, if my people will throw it down, if my people will dig the ditches, I will move sovereignly then. And I will work a work in your days, which if you saw it, you wouldn't believe it. And if you heard it, you wouldn't believe it. God's getting ready to do that for some people. And if this is not the people, God's going to have a people that he's going to move with sovereignly. God longs to bring us into his glory ordained for us before the world was begun. But somebody has got to want desperately enough, say, to pour it out and throw it down. Somebody's got to care. This country is going to hell, pale mail. This nation is going to hell. Does anybody here care enough to pour it out and throw it down? Does anybody care that their city is going to hell? Does anybody care that their family is lost? Does anybody want to pour it out? Pour it out. Pour it out. Does anybody care your city is going to hell? Say throw it down. Pour it out. I've got to care more than I cared when I came here. I've got to care more than I cared when I got here. That's right, Sister Man. If we give all, pour it out. Nothing save a pot of oil. That's the starting point of a miracle. And until we give it all, folks, we just might as well make up our minds. Stop right here. No need to preach any further. You've got to be a people that gives your all. If you're preaching his wife, you've got to get up and pour it out. You've got to pour it out every day. You've got to give it every day. You've got to throw it down every day. You've got to, or it'll become a castaway. It'll become barren. It'll be nothing but a hiss and a by word. You ain't nobody only what God made you. Pour it out. Throw it down. Until you give all and pour it out, we will not see that great promised revival for this generation. We're kidding ourselves, folks. I know what I'm feeling. I'm up against an invincible, imponderable something. I'm telling you. That's right. I'm up against that. And until that gets changed in our mind, I'm not trying to impress you or let them call me a great speaker because I couldn't give a rip about all of that. I'm just telling you what we're facing right here today. We can shout and holler and scream and do all we want to, but somebody's got to make up their mind here today. I'm going to pour it out. Somebody's got to make up their mind to give all. You've got to give all, folks. You ain't here long enough to do nothing else. You've got to give it all. Yes. Nothing can be used for God if you hold on to it. Pour it out, little widow. For your two sons' sake, pour it out. For your family's sake, pour it out. Right. Pour it out, preacher. For your family's sake and for your church's sake and for your city's sake. Where do people go like a call I got this morning? My husband's having a heart attack over here in the motel. Could you get somebody to come pray for us? Where do they go in cities where there's no church? Where do they go when they can't find a preacher? You got to do something with me here today, folks. You got to see what I'm seeing and feel what I'm feeling. We got to get on deck. We got to be the answer. We got to be the remedy. We got to be the salt and the water and the bread. We got to be the cure. We got to pour this thing out. We got to get serious about it. We got to have a church where people can go and get healing and help and deliverance. Somebody's going to stand before I get through and say, I'm going to be that miracle. Somebody's going to stand and say, I'm going to do something for God like I ain't never done in all my life.
Somebody's going to say, I'm going to build a greater church. I'm going to capture my city for God. I'm going to change. I'm going to pour it out every day. You may be seated. But I want you to shout at me again and say, pour it out. Every day somewhere you better get behind closed doors and start pouring out your little oil. Or you ain't going to get no more oil poured in. You ain't going to have no revival. You're not going to have special miracles. You're not going to have what we're supposed to have. We got a little dab here, but it ain't what God wants to do for us. Every miracle, not one exception in this book, began upon the platform of a need or a problem. If you ain't got one, come see me. I'll share mine with you. Say, there's a demand. A parent, no supply except for a miracle. I need a miracle today. I'm not going to get that miracle until I pour it out. You hear me? You're not going to build that church, sir, till you pour it out. I'm not kind. I don't want to be as ruthless I, 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 I mean it, but folks, we need somebody screaming at us every day. Get up from there. Get up from there and go somewhere and pour it out. Get up from there and go to loving people. Get up from there and turn yourself wrong side out. Get up from there. You ain't got long to live. Get up from there and do what you know you ought to do. If you're called to preach, eat cornbread and drink branch water, you're a lucky man to get to preach this truth. You're a lucky man. Now, you've come here run out, wrung out, patience gone, your desire, your burden, your vision, your motivation, your commitment, your want to has got up and gone. Fatigue has overwhelmed you. Circumstances have demanded more than you can handle. You find yourself bankrupt in more ways than one. You have a need and you can't meet it. You have a problem and you can't solve it. There's a demand and you can't supply it. And nothing seems to make sense at all. You're waiting for a miracle. But that miracle is waiting for every one of you. And that miracle is prayer. And until you pour it out, sir, ma'am, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to get that miracle. You're not going to get it. Now, that's all you need to hear today. Say, if I want it, come on and scream it at me. What have I been talking about? Say, I've got to pour it out. Come on and say it until it gets in your nugget. I've got to pour out something. On this first day of because of the times 94, I've come to tell you, thus saith the Lord, pour it out. If you will, God said, I will. But God wants your total life. God wants your gifts. God wants your time. God wants your love. God wants your devotion. He wants your all. He wants your unstinting service, gladly and willingly. God wants your ministry. God wants your desire to achieve. God wants your motivation. God wants everything you've got. He wants to be your total source. And He may strip every one of us until He is our total source. Because He's got miracles galore that we've never even thought of or even imagined. See, I believe every bit of that. If this room here today, and it's a good crowd, but folks, there ought to be millions. I'm telling you, I see you, I hear, I feel. We ought to be pouring out till God would move so sovereignly. Are you hearing me? There's a sovereign move of God waiting for us, but not until we pour out. Say, pour out. Pour out. Scream it, Brother Pew. Scream it, Brother Tim. Pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out. Scream it out there. Pour it out. And if you will, say rivers. Inflowing power. Rivers. 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 Oh, and we're not going to do for God what we've got to do. Just face it until we pour it out. We're not going to reap the harvest of this generation until we give our utmost for his highest. See, now I believe all of that. 
And I want you to look at me. I don't believe my own advertisement because I'm not doing what I want to do yet. I'm not doing it, but I'm going to tell you what will work if you'll give it all. I mean, hold nothing in reserve. Hold nothing. Ah, nothing. We've come to the gates of Canaan, but we've never entered in. We've come to the very threshold, but we perish in unbelief of sin. We've been to because of the times before. We're coming to the place two ways part. One leads to the land of promise and one to a hardened heart. What saith the Lord shall I do for thee? What hast thou in thine house? Pour it out. Entrust the totality of yourself and your possessions. Your children, your family, your church, your ministry. Your material blessings and your assets. Your gifts, your abilities, your job, your position and honors. Your personality, entrust it all to Him. He is the sole possessor of all you formerly held title to. He is your total source. It was all His from the start. This past September, we celebrated our 50th anniversary. This pastor and this church so celebrated that event uh, hilariously. And this church stood here and said, we want to give you a retirement. I asked Gerald day before yesterday, I said, where is the retirement? He said, well, I'm not ready to retire yet. Said, they're they're still, they will be working on that. I said, Gerald, if something happens to you, I won't have a retirement. Oh, yes, you will. They'll go ahead and finish it. I said, well, that was more than a little act up there that night. They wanted us to have a retirement. He said, but I'm not ready to retire, and that may involve me retiring, and I'm not ready to retire. with your little three score and ten years if you're lucky. What are you going to do with them? Time. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish pouring it out. I'm going to love souls and I'm going to pray and I'm going to learn this Bible better than I've ever known it. If I'm incarcerated with an infirm, uh, aged parent, I'll just know this Bible better, devil. I'll just know everything I'm doing, I'm going to do it better. Because I don't have a three score in ten years and they're just about to run out on me. My time is incredibly short. My energy is depleting. I've just a little jar of oil left. I'm going to pour out my oil. I'm going to give the rest of my oil, Anthony. I'm going to give the rest of my strength. What little bit of sense I got, this is going to get it. All of my eggs is going into this basket. Everything I got, Jeff's going in this basket. I don't care about nothing else. It never did take much to make me happy. It don't take much to make me happy now. I learned souls. Say souls. Say prayer. Prayer. Studying the word. Imparting it. Reaching people. I don't need much else. It doesn't take much if you'll say pour it out. out. Hallelujah. David said now also when I'm old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not until I have shewed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that's going to come on in behind me. That's my prayer, Lord. You can take me right after I get through showing your strength because if you'll pour it out, just be remembered as somebody that gave their all, stacked it all at Calvary and see what he won't do for you, ma'am, sir. You don't want to clap your hands over that one? I'm talking to you. You've got to pour it out. Pour it out. I cannot rest. I cannot rest yet. Say, this is not my rest. I'm reaching for true adventure in God. I press. I strive. I run. I seek. I desire. I follow on. The God that I serve is on the move. Always progressing. He's always going somewhere. And I'm going with Him. Two-thirds of the word God is go. 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 That consumes me day and night. More now at 68 than it did at 28. I plead with you today. Give it all. Yeah. You ain't got long to give it, ma'am. Give it all. Yeah. You won't have nothing left. They'll squander it. They got enough. They, uh, give it all. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Will you hear me? Yeah. Will you pour it out, Brother Baker? Yeah. Will you try to give it all? Yeah. Will you get up every day saying, I'm going to go behind closed doors. I'm going to pour it out. I'm going to pour it out. I'm going to pour it out. 
This is more than a profession. Yes, it is. Called his family and played all night the other night. Had a serious decision to make. He said, I learned that when they carried me to the church and they prayed all night and settled the matter. We need some all night prayer meetings. We need somebody pouring out. Oh, we're, we're, I'm not getting nowhere much. Mm -mm. No, come on, folks. You just raise your hands right now and say, let that hit me right square dab in the eyes. Let that hit me. Say, I'm going to, I've come here today to pour it out. This is more than a profession. Say, it's a lifestyle. You are in this to pour out. The great ocean is in constant state of evaporation. It gives back what it receives and sends up its waters in mist to gather into clouds. And so there is rain for earth and greenness and beauty and everywhere. But there are far too many who do not believe in evaporation. That's why there's barrenness. They got all they could get and they kept all they got. And so there is no fertilizing but only stagnant miasmatic pools. God can give us a great many things that we do not wish. But he cannot give us his best unless we desire it. Unless we measure the reality and intensity of our desire. And then you measure your capacity by that. As the atmosphere rushes into a vacuum. So God's power and blessings flows into a measure in which you desire him. How bad do you want him here today? How bad do you desire him? Did you come to get it? When are you going to get it? Say when I pour it out. And when I desire it. Give him your all. Give me your little bit of meal, widow. And her barrel was never empty. Is that in the Bible? Yeah. Say, that goes for me. Give him a little oil. Give him a little... It'll never, it'll never run out. It'll never run out. At the marriage feast in Cana, say, as they poured out. Watch that. Say, as they poured out, the water was turned into wine. As Jesus poured it out, he was transfigured and his countenance was changed as he poured it out. As the 120 poured it out for 7 to 10 days, suddenly Pentecost. Anybody want a Pentecost? How bad do you want it? Would you pour it out for 7 to 10 days? Don't just call this preaching. Just say, i got to get that. As Elijah and Elisha still went on pouring out, behold, a chariot of fire and horses of fire from somewhere they came. As Elisha poured it out, the eyes of his servant was open, and he saw the mountains full of horses and chariots and fire round about that came from somewhere. I'm expecting as I pour out anything to happen for me. So, broken-hearted parent, you're the channel, because our ad our adequacy is the means of the miracle. You are the channel. He's the total source. If you're a parent and broken hearted, pour it out. If you're a discouraged preacher here today, as you pour it out, revival's going to happen to astound you. Go ahead and clap your hands about that. God said, prove me. Say, prove me. I give you a dare. I dare you to prove me and see if I won't. If you'll pour out, I'll pour you out a blessing you cannot even receive. I don't believe we believe it. I don't believe you believe it. Elisha said to Joash the king, Oh, oh, thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. You should have poured it out more than you poured it out. Then you would have consumed Syria. You should have just kept at it, preacher. You are now penalized because you determine the limit of your miracle by however much you pour out. The magnitude of our resources swells to the proportions of his riches and glory. I want that, but I'll never get it wishing and longing and dreaming. I've got to pour it out. If I'm not broken to pour it out, if I'm not broken to pour it out, you've got to give up the seed to get the harvest, and a bumper crop won't come with just one seed. You've got to pour it out. Say, a little seed. Say, a little oil, a little meal, a little rod, a little cloud, a little nail, a little ox goad, a little maid, a little lad with a little lunch, a little alabaster box, two little mites, 
and a little Jew dressed in prison garb, hungry, thirsty, weary, sick, body racked in pain from beatings and stonings, scourging, shipwreck, nakedness and sword with 195 marks, livid marks on his body from lictor's lash. And he said, I can't it all. Say, I can't it all. I'm going to pour it all out. It's dung. Say, it's dung. All of your profession is dung. All you got is dung. I ain't got nothing but dung. And he said, I count it all as dung. And I'm going to pour out my dung. Right. Right. Pour it all out as dung in exchange for what, Paul? The excellency of the knowledge of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Say, in so doing, he saved the then known world, shook the Roman Empire, crumbled it, a little hunchback, sore-eyed Jew who poured out his little jar of oil, stripped for the race, and said, I press, I pour it out. I press toward the mark. Abraham drew near to God and pleaded it out. Lot spared, Isaac spared, seed as the sand of the seashore and as the stars of heaven. Anybody want that? Evidently, evidently. Okay, you got to pour it out. Moses stood between a wrathful God and a sinning Israel, interceded it out. Israel was spared. Say, Jacob wrestled it out. Power with God and with men. How bad do you want it? Are you hearing me? Yeah. Hannah, Hannah poured out her bitterness of soul so that the barren hath borne Samuel. Yea, and six more. And she that hath many children is waxed feeble. I can get ahead of everybody in this world if I just pour it out. They ain't got no crowd. We can't get if I just pour it out. If I just pour it out, God can take one little somebody. Do you believe that, JT? Just say that thing hollering after me. Say that thing hollering for me. Say, I believe that. Yes. Pour it out. Give it all you got. Yes, come Praise on. Praise God. Say, I believe it. I believe it. You may be seated. We ain't seen nothing yet. No. Rachel cried it out, give me children or I die. And she broke barrenness and became the mother of Joseph and Benjamin. Uh, yes. right. Joshua marched it out for days and the walls fell flat. Anybody want that? How bad do you want it? Gideon just poured his 32,000 army out and routed, routed the Midianites with just 300. Anybody want that? Jesus poured out his soul even unto death, the counterpart of which is Pentecost. Anybody want that? He didn't attempt to make an exhibit of his life and save men thereby. He was no exhibitionist. It would take more than a human life to save this sinful world. Even he must throw it down and pour it out. Please understand, it is when love is poured out that the slums are purged and churches are built and schools and orphanages and the like. It is love poured out that's given bread to the hungry and clothed the naked. It has given the Bible to nations. It has launched the lifeboat to the perishing. It has taken the prodigal by the right hand and opened the door of repentance to the harlot and the thief. It was love poured out that sent Livingston and Carey and Judson Taylor to the far-flung harvest fields. Pour it out today. Pour it out, missionaries. Pastors, I'm not screaming at you, but just come on, make up your mind. I'm going to do something different when I leave here. I'm going to pour it out. I'm not going to get discouraged, not to the point. Everybody wants to quit. Jeremiah did. Moses did. Abraham wanted to. Everybody that was ever successful wanted to quit. Don't tell me they didn't. They did. I wanted to take a slow boat to China. I want to go to New York. I don't mean by that that I'm successful, but I'm telling you, everybody wants to quit. But you've got to get up the next day and say, I ain't a quitting. There's fire in me. You may be seated. Pour out love because love never fails. Pour out mercy because you may need it. Not maybe, you will need it. Be best you have it. And weep over it instead of gloating over it and rejoicing over it. Be better. Be better. Pour out forgiveness if you want forgiveness. Because if you don't forgive, you ain't going to get none. And everybody in here needs forgiveness. 
so you better pour it out. I challenge you today to pour it out. Now Moses, what is that in thine hand? Look at me. Say a rod. A rod. Throw it down. Moses threw it down and it immediately became a writhing, hissing, ser hissing serpent. Hear me. Everything which we have not thrown down before the Lord, the nature of the serpent is in it. And until you decide at this conference to throw the rod, until you decide here today to throw the rod down, there's a serpent in every one of us. And they may not be hissing and writhing at you today, but you don't dare cross them real, real good. But until you throw that buddy down and grab him by the nap of the neck and throw him down and say, every day. Say I, I, say, I got a serpent in me. And I've come here today to throw the rod down. In that old selfish, greedy, uncrucified self-life is there coiled like a poisonous snake right. ready to inject its deadly poison. Throw it down, Moses. Let me have it. I've got your riches. I've got your throne. I've got your kingdom. I've got your fame. I've got your popularity. Now I want your rod. Throw it down. Throw it down. Look at your neighbor and say, throw it down. What did it become when you really threw it down? You won't be smiling, honey, when you really throw it down and you see what it really is. You will not be laughing when you throw yourself down like you ought to and get a good look at what you really are. There's a snake in you. Now, pick it up by the tail. Now, Jeff could demonstrate that for me a whole lot better than I can, so I'm not going to linger there today. He'd tell you how to, to do but I'm going to tell you, if you're brave enough to pick up a snake and hold it at all, you better take it up by the business end. Because holding the snake by the tail leaves the dangerous end unattended. But God said, Moses, I want you to take that little bitty end. And I want you to give me that big end. I want you to get down as low as you can get. Because I'm fixing to increase you and me together. And when you throw it down, you take a hold of the little end of that and I get a hold of the big end and I'll bring you up with me. You ain't seen nothing yet. Because I want to do something so big in every one of your lives here today. I want to do something bigger for you. I want to do something bigger for you, Janelle. I want to do something bigger for you. I want to do something so big, so miraculous. God said, Moses, that they may believe that God has appeared unto you. Does anybody want the credentials of heaven? Does anybody want the approval and the benediction, benediction of heaven? You've got to throw your rod down. Does anybody hear me, really? Joanne, are you hearing me? Say, I'm going to throw it down. Oh, I know you have. But say, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to pick it up at that little end and tell him I can't handle it. I just can't handle this. It's too big for me. It's too dangerous. I can't afford to yell you. But you go ahead and take a hold of it and leave that big end for me. And they'll know that I'm with you because only God can handle it. Now. Moses, you just take that little in and give me the big... Say, with much trepidation, he picked up that snake, and lo and behold, it became a what? Shout it. And the snake was gone, and the throwing down of the rod represents you totally, completely abandoning yourself to God in total submission to His will. I'll go anywhere, I'll do anything, I'll give anything, I'll go every day, 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 every day. And you're going to come up with a rod of authority. You watch me. It's equivalent to an endowment of power from on high. God didn't want the rod. God wanted Moses. And, and the rod before it was thrown down stood in the path between Moses and God. But now it is the rod of God. In the hand of God's man. And the dead rod of man thrown down became the rod of God, the most famous rod in history. That thrown down rod took center stage. It was now the rod of authority to accomplish God's purpose and win the battle for God's people. Yeah. Jeff, you don't believe that. A shout it. Man's rod became God's rod after it was cast down. 
Hear me, thus saith the Lord, thou shalt take this rod now, Moses, in thine hand, and you will do great signs and wonders. What did he do with it? What did he first do? Say he threw it down. I don't believe he got that. After he threw it down, now he's got the rod of God and its authority to do anything. Lift up your rod, Moses, and say, The sea divides. Smite the rock, and water gushes forth. It is now God's rod in man's hand, and here comes old Amalek. And Moses said, Joshua, to the valley, prepare for battle. I'm going to stand on the hill with this rod in my hand. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword as long as Moses' hands were raised with the rod. And that was what was got to happen. The snake had to get out of Moses' rod, and it becomes the rod of God. And now everything's got to back up and get out of the way. Is that awesome? Say, that's awesome. Come on and talk to me, because it is. That's awesome. You get the snake out of you and let God take the big end. Now get this, because I want you to get it. Say, the rod of man might be straight, might be seasoned, and might be strong, might do all the rules, but it is only a human tool with no power beyond the natural until you throw it down. I don't care who you are here today and how good you look, ma'am. You better throw it down. You ain't nothing but a, there's, there's a poisonous something coiled up in us and you'd see it if we ever crossed it. You got to throw it down. He could do no more work than, that rod in the hands of Moses could do no more work than Moses could. Until he threw it down. It had no more power than Moses had. It could accomplish no more than Moses could accomplish. I want those men and women who went on a seven day fast with Brother Anthony and Sister Mickey here the last uh, few weeks. I want them to stand all over this building. I want you to stand. Those of you that just came off of that seven day fast. I, I, want, you to, I, want, you to sh I want you to shout it out, Roger. Why you went on that seven day fast. I've been fasting. The only thing that's going to last on this earth. People and souls. I'm investing in people and souls. Brian, where are you? What are you going to do and why? How come you went on two seven day fasts in the last two years ever since you've been in this church? Why? You got to throw yourself down. Got to throw yourself down so you can get the power of God that exceeds riches. Joe Croom, why did you go on a seven-day fast? For souls. left their churches looking for somewhere to go he asked you last night do you have your barn ready to receive them are you loving enough are you kind enough are you uncensoring enough are you ready to receive that 52,000 oh you don't, you don't want this folks like I thought you really wanted it you don't really want that 52,000 like I thought you really wanted it help us Help us. Help us, Jeff. You may be seated. Ron Hinkey, why did you go on that seven-day fast? I want these kids to be here, Dad. Listen. I want to read like he reads. Listen, and he means that. I want to know him. I want to know him. Every Sunday morning at 7 to 8 gets the Holy Ghost in his class. They've packed out the G.A. Mangan Auditorium with this man's uh, Bible class. Larry Clark, why did you go on a seven-day fast? Yeah. 
Say what price? How bad do you want it? Say they're throwing it down. They're following their pastor. They're following their pastor. Throwing it down. All night prayer meetings. Leading the way. Having Bible study groups. Charlie Sherry, an attorney, why did you go on a seven day fast? Why did you go on a seven day fast? You've baptized hundreds down at the jail. Why did you go on a seven day fast? My is secondary to all God in my life. You hear that? Precious, precious. Why did you go on a seven day fast? So I'm pouring it out. Candy, the gymnastic teacher of this city that came here praying on your rosary and all and never went back to the other place. Why did you go on a seven day fast this year? I'm pouring it out. And why did you go on a seven day fast? I'm trying to reach the singles in my community, so I was throwing it down. Say it. Say, God is going to give me. Say, give me. Say, her little jar of oil will multiply. As long as she reaches, he will pour. He will pour. Pour it out every day. Pour it out every day. Come on and raise your hands and say, I'm going to pour it out. You may be seated. Sister Mickey, why did you go on that seven day fast with your husband? I don't believe you want it then, folks, if that hadn't got you. Now, if, if, that, if that don't get your hands in the air and say, my God, I got to throw it down. How bad do you want it? What did you come here for? More than a shout and more than praise. Raise your hands and say, God, I'm going to throw it down. I'm going to pour it out. Tell me when to stop. We've got to throw it down and get rid of, say, pride, greed, resentment, stubbornness, retaliation, jealousy, lying, phoniness, laziness, carnality, prejudices, spiritual indifference has laid its cold hand upon us. We become numb to the suffering of others and the losses of mankind. We become callous to crosses. We've not put His kingdom first. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. We don't love one another like we ought to. We have not given to the work of God like we ought to. We haven't preached this gospel in all the world like we ought to. We've neglected prayer and the Word. For there's a famine for a systematic chapter by chapter of the Word of God in our churches. We've given attention to things more than souls. And he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a what? I tell you today, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. I'll take from the one that's got and give it to him that has. So you look at me. I'm coming after yours if you don't want it. I mean that, way. I mean that. I mean that. I mean that. It's time to throw that old dead rod down. I'm sick of it, Mickey. 
Let God take the serpent out of that rod. Let it become the rod of God in your hand. Seas will split for you. Rocks will split wide open. The enemy will retreat. Now you have the authority of the rod of authority in your hands over the power of all the enemy. Signs and miracles and wonders. How bad do you want signs and miracles and wonders? Throw the rod down. Pour it out. A sovereign move of God. It won't happen until we throw the rod down. You got to lift the rod of authority and then every devil will stat. Go back to hell where it came from. Cast him into the center of the earth. Diseases won't stand before you. Nothing will stand before the rod of God. I want a revival greater than Pentecost. We don't have to... Re- I know it's the reference point, but if my people will, I will. Say, it's time to throw it down. Let God take the serpent out of it and say this today. Say, once there lived another man within me, child of earth and slave of Satan, but I threw him down and nailed him to the cross of Jesus. That old man was nothing now to me. Now a new man is living inside of me. My old dead rod is now God's rod in my hand, and nothing's going to stand before me. I've got it till nearly 11. We're so foolish to limp at the scope of our work. What we can understand and what we can see, what we can deem possible with the context of common sense. Why will we operate on the visible resources? Our bank accounts, our anticipated receipts, our visible assets, when the treasury of the universe is full and waiting for you to tap it. Yes, yes. Joel said, and it shall come to pass afterward. That is my little Bible, but I've got to get something across to you. Say, I've got to throw it down. And if I were a man, I'd just fall down here for you. Anthony, I wish you would just fall down. All right. All That's, a, that's how you're building that church. Terry, throw it down there by your husband. Throw it down there. Say every day. Every day. Brother Chicka Hale, throw it down there. Chicka Lumpkin, throw it down there. Ray, throw it down. Say throw it down. Say every day. I got to have the authority of God. Say after you throw it down, thank you, thank you. Say after you throw it down. After what? After you lament, you priest. After you howl, you ministers of the altar. After you lie all night in sackcloth, you preachers. After you weep between the porch and the altar where people can see you exampling it. After you turn to me, saith the Lord, with all of your heart poured out. After you come to me with fasting and weeping and mourning. After you rend your heart and not your garments. And turn to the Lord your God. Joel said, there is a day coming, saith the Lord. When I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters, young and old. Servants, handmaidens. Ladies and gentlemen, this is that. Say, this is that day. This is that day. How bad do you want it, Brother McCoo? I'd rather be a mule. I'd rather be an angel. I'd rather be that lamb than to be that mule. I'd rather die as a lamb than to be that bucking, kicking mule. I want you to know that what was Joel's that, this is it. After you pour it out, after you throw it down, after you dig your ditches, and I won't have time to go into that, but folks, it's hard work. And God said, it's a light thing for me to do the rest of it. Did you hear me? God said, that's a light thing for me to give you an abundance. But he said, it's hard work to dig ditches. But you ain't going to dig no ditches. I won't get to go into that. It's a hallelujah story. But let me tell you, until you dig, till you roll the stone away, till you march, till you go, till you give, you ain't going to get it. You ain't going to get no water. And the Moabites are going to eat you up. 
And you're going to be wondering why everybody else got it and you didn't. They're pulling out somewhere. That don't just happen. Uh-uh. That don't just happen. After you dig, after you break your alabaster box, after you march around the walls, after you build the altar, God sends the fire, but not until you build the altar. No fire will fall until the altar is built. After Nineveh fashioned and prayed, God changed his mind for two centuries. After Hezekiah rent his kingly robes and prayed and fasted, 185,000 went to sleep and never woke up. After Daniel prayed three times a day, gave hungry lions lockjaw. How bad do you want it? You think God will do something for him he won't do for us? This ain't a sermon, folks. This has got to become a way of life. This can't be a profession. This has got to be a lifestyle. You've got to believe in it. You've got to believe in it. You've got to believe enough to do it. And it'll take more than your name on a prayer sheet. We must pray, say, in the Holy Ghost. Interceding with groanings. <laughs> pouring it out. Say, I can't utter it. Sighings, weepings, lamentings, travailings in the Holy Ghost, building up your most holy faith. Say, snatching them out of the burning. And then the greatest revival since Pentecost. It'll tear down every stronghold. It'll reach lost husbands and wives, lost sons and daughters. It'll bring healing to your body, mind, and emotions. Pour it out. It'll give stability when everything and everybody around you is being shaken. It'll hush anarchy in our streets and crime in our cities. And there are seven terrible, uh, what you call it, in our city. What do you call them? Little groups that get together. Gangs. Thank you. I'm old. I'm 68. I'm trying to give you some strength from God. You help me with my English. Oh, the inexhaustible, inexhaustible, inexhaustible subject of prayer. It is the greatest agency put in our hands. Prayer gets the devil like nothing else gets him. Prayer gets the devil like he has an allergy to prayer. It gets the devil like nothing else. Throw yourself down. Throw yourself down. Pour it out every day. Pour it out. Pour it out to your people. Pour it out to your family. Pour it out to your city. Everywhere you go in your city, pour it out. Everywhere you go, pour it out. Now, it's just that simple. God will if you will. If you won't, He cannot. You've got to pour it out. Oh, that we could ever discover His boundlessness in prayer. God has ever worked miracle signs and wonders through godly men and women who poured it out and who threw it. It's such a pleasure to do it. You'll be happier than you've ever been in all of your life. And you'll want to get up tomorrow because you'll wonder what's in store. Uh, there's another day for me to give it. There's another day, beautiful life, for me to give it. Now, we need a prayer movement in every church. Across this nation, it needs to spread like a prayer. Fire. We need a prayer like a flood, like a tornado. We need schools of prayer in our churches. There's a school of prayer in this church besides the 24-hour, three-hour shifts of prayer. There's a school of prayer. There's concerts of prayer going on. We need summits of prayer. Prayer is the only answer to our problems. No believer's spiritual life will rise to stay above the level of his praying. No church's ultimate effectiveness will rise to stay above the level of its corporate prayer life. No church's corporate prayer life will be greater than the personal prayer lives of those who make up its consistency. And no people will pray if they don't see their leaders praying. No believer's prayer life will rise to stay above the level of his or her own personal regular daily time of worship with God. We must receive from God and release the supernatural of his power into our communities. Throw it down so you'll have something to give. Because you can't give what you ain't got. The failure of this church is her failure to pray and to love and to repent. Likewise, the failure of every Christian is the failure of prayer, which can be secured in no other way only to pray and pour it out. Now, I cannot emphasize that too much. It's a critical part of your life. By these means, I can succeed in the things that he has called me to do and have a place with my predecessors. I don't have to be constantly referring back to them. And the next generation won't be having to constantly refer back to me. I can set the pace. And I do not have to be intimidated by nobody's prayer life. And you don't either. How are we going to respond? And I'm closing. How are we going to respond to this most wicked, decadent society of history? A society embedded in humanism, secularism, new age, gripped with AIDS, cancer. Paul, wherever he and his wife is, her, they just came into this church. Own uh, nursing homes in this area just came into this church. Paul Price. His wife, Annabelle, is weeping now and told me last night, said, Sister Mangan, I've got a hold of every prayer tape I can get a hold of. I'm going to rest my people from that new age business. 
I looked at my own father that's loved me and, and nurtured me. And I said, don't talk to my son about that new age business. That's so corrupt and it's from the depths of hell. I've got to break that, she said, in my family. We're praying in the Holy Ghost because this church is going to shake this world. If we ever wake up. Anybody believe me? Does anybody here believe me? Say, throw it down. Pour it out. Get rid of all the other stuff and let God pour it in. Now, right now, say, I can pray and touch heaven. God and His throne and have influence among the angels through prayer. Say, right now, I can pray and touch earth, its circumstances, its occupants, its enterprises. Say, right now, I can pray and touch Satan imposing a victory over him that is vested in the name of Jesus. In fact, I suggest we stand and pray. I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to do. If you know anything else, folks, come on and do it. Throw it down. Pour it out. Pour it out right now. Pour it out with every eye closed. Scream it out. Throw it down. Throw it down. Get rid of the snake. Raise it as a come up with a rod of authority.